Mbali. Mm-hmm. Mbali was his first girlfriend. Okay. Do you know Mbali? Like coffee sex work. Personally, yeah. in my view, yeah. um, Kenan and Anele, um, you know, they were different stages of their lives. Yeah. And this is my personal view and I don't speak for anybody else. I'm not sure that they were good for each other. For us as his parents, um, we've never doubted Kenan. We've never doubted that, you know, did he, you know, did he push her? Did he not push her? Was he concerned? Of course, I think in those circumstances he was concerned. And and the inference of these stories that came out subsequently as Kenan being abusive, the inference was that that he killed her. Yeah. Hi everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Within. I am of course your host, Hazel, host of the most. Sitting with me today is a gentleman from Cape Town, Mr. Tony Forbes. It's actually Antonio. Antonio. An- Antonio Forbes. Hello, Antonio. Antonio Demetrius. Yes. Now, do you know who's Demetrius? Who is Demetrius? Demetrius Safendas was okay. the guy that assassinated the architect of apartheid. Hendrik Verwoerd. Yes. Wow. So my father named me my second name. Hectic. So the first name comes after a footballer, a soccer player. The second one after Dimitri's offenders. Antonio. Antonio Dimitrius Forbes. Is it is it okay for me to say Awe Awe who handed mass again? Of course it is. It can good with me. But it's I guess by a good. Yeah. I guess by a good. I guess by a by a good. Perfect Africa. Your Afrikaans is perfect. As as top ten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you that you is so as <laughs> you flew all the way here yeah, yeah. to be with me today and I know you would have been anywhere in the world but you chose to be yeah. here with me for the whole day for the whole all day the you should just get a residence here in Joburg because Joburg is a vibe I eh? but I like Cape Town because Cape Town's got a better rugby team Fela only yeah yeah uh, we, we've why. got everything. Yeah. We've got like the lifestyle, the weather. We just don't have the beach and the sand. No, I'll, I'll, I'll want to go out all the time here in Joburg. So it's better for me to be in To just relax that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle Tony or Tony or Antonio, thank Antonio. you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure. So I must put emphasis on the Antonio. Antonio. It's Italian. People don't know that's my name, man. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, tell yeah. me tell me a bit about yourself. You've shared a bit about your dad and your name. Let's expand on it a bit. Where did you grow up? How did you grow up? Let's talk about your childhood, your siblings, sure. and your mom. I grew up in Cape Town. Um, my dad was a hero. He passed when I was three and a half. And... My mom had three children at the time that he passed. And she remarried. And she remarried um, the, the guy I call my father. I also call him dad. Um, who was childhood friends with my biological father. Okay. You know, so, um, so that was so... Um, and I remember my childhood very, very clearly. Um, I had a happy childhood. I grew up in a big family, the the Forbes family. In um, we, it's a very large family. I think ten ten children, of which my father was one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose it's a very typical family in those days when there was no TV, you know. Um, in Cape Town, 
I, I have fond memories of my childhood growing up. We were a very competitive family. You know, with, with 10 kids, there's yeah, a lot of competition. There has to be a number one there. So we, I love sports. I grew up um, playing all kinds of sports. Were you an, an athletic child? Of course. Can't you see? I can't, uh, but okay. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a machine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, we play. We were very competitive. We played. I mean, I played. So far, I played club soccer, league soccer. I've played league cricket. I've played league squash. I still play league tennis, by the way. Nice. My next thing is is paddle. Okay. I think that's where I'm going to go. Um, very competitive family. Um, it didn't matter what we played. We competed. And if you lost, the other person would cheat, uh, would would um, would tease you yes. mercilessly. Yes. And that's what I. That's how I grew up, and that's how I grew my kids up. So if you think about Kenan, um, he was very competitive. I never. I made sure I never lost anything to him. So you know, <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 I guess our families were very traditional. In the sense of, you know, you, you've got to go study. Um, if you're not, you've got to get the paper. They have to go to school. Yeah, you got to go to school. School equals a um, very good future. And, and yeah, so I, I studied. I was very academic. I was, um, yeah, I did well at, um, at academics. That's my main thing. You know, I'm a bit of a nerd. Um, I was ne never confident with girls, you know. Uh -huh. I was always very nerdy. <laughs> um, having said that, I got married to Lynn when I w the day before I turned 21. You married young. Yeah, yeah. So I was a young father. I was a young husband. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but uh. yeah. Um, so sort of fast forward. That's <laughs> but I. I, I have a, you know, I have fond memories of growing up in Cape Town and um, and being part of a large family. Um, uh, yeah, that's me. Um, was Lynn your first girlfriend? Or your first serious girlfriend? Yes. She was your first serious girlfriend and she's the girl that you turned into wife. Yes. And you had two children with. Two children. Your firstborn, who is known to us as Keenan Jared Forbes. Forbes. But you pronounce it differently. You say Kenan. It's Kenan. It's Kenan. Kia, like Kia with the R. Kenan. Nan. Kenan. Kenan Forbes. Yes. So Kenan was um, named after, the first name is, comes after an Irish rugby player, Kiernan. And the second name, Jared, comes from a tennis player, Swedish tennis player called Anders Jared. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I guess it reflects the... You sentimental the, the sporting, like that. Uh, yeah. Stefan is named after Stefan Edberg. Mm. And Nicholas, he was born on the 26th of uh, Christmas. Mm. So, Nicholas. Let's, let's talk about marriage, especially at 21. Was it an obligation? Yeah, okay, Tony, you got to go pregnant. You need to step up now. Or was that just the way of life back then? Well, firstly, it was both of us. It wasn't me getting her pregnant, you know. It was a, <laughs> it was a dual thing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, I grew up um, in that culture and that time when... Um, if there is a, a child that the, the honorable thing to do, the right thing to do, and the expectation was that you would get married. Um, so yeah, um, you know, which, which I think is different today. Um, Kenan had a child and he didn't get married, mm. for example. Mm. So, so very definitely, um, I think at that point in time, you know, the culture, I guess it's, I don't know if it's a, it's a colored uh, community sort of culture. It's a universal thing, actually. Whites do it, blacks do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would I change anything? Um, 
Probably not. Okay. I'm not a person that dwells on regrets. And having said that, I've learned a lot about life in terms of, you know, there's a time for everything. Sure. So, <laughs> you know, being a, a young father, being a, a, a new husband, starting a career, you know, there's a, there's a thing called timing and certain timing of life and not to force things, you know. Of course, I learned it much later in my life, but, you know, would I change anything? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. And, and how were you as a father? How, how did you raise your boys? I was very strict. Um, I remember I was very hard on, on my kids. Yeah. I wanted them to, I guess, you know, do the things that I was taught, you know, so work hard at school, um, you know, for example, and, um, and be, and be disciplined. And so I was tough on them. I mean, I remember Kenan as uh, years later when he was growing up, he said, dad, I used to hate you. Um, when Western province lost on a Saturday, you would call me and say, bring me your shoes. Let me see if you shine them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. so, I said I couldn't get far away so I, as a father I was very strict mm -hmm. um, having said that you know Kieran said to me you know what dad but it you know I didn't realize at the time you were training me you know and I think the, there are more um, there are good things that came from that uh, you know in, he himself was a very strict father with Cairo yeah um, so you know I was strict but there are certain things not just me uh, you know I speak for Lynn as well that I'm I'm happy to reflect that we instilled certain values in them and certain you know we, a work ethic um, respect for other people um being bold to pursue your dreams mm -hmm. and yeah and if i look at um having having pride in your country um always being willing to help people um you know my my children our children they were their own people they are their own people kenan was his own man but there's certain foundational uh i guess um, values that we instilled in them and um, so you know it's a bit of a mixed bag as a father I'm sure I definitely made mistakes I was yeah. I was but that's life you know that is, that is life let's let's talk about your your sons they are similar and yet so different let's talk about their personalities um, Kiernan took his own way and Stefan is he's also his own man. Who takes off the who when you look at your boys? I guess, you know, Kenan took in his in his physically, obviously, um, and in his mannerisms, in how he was, sense of humor, um, competitiveness, um, you know, creativity. And and being bold, it's it's my personality, you know. Um, there are a lot of things that I cannot claim credit for in terms of what he achieved. Yeah. Um, but I guess it it took mostly after me. But in terms of as a as a child, it was very it's very good natured, very. Um, uh, Kenan was you know it didn't have a malicious bone in his body. Um, he was not someone that would be fighting. I think the Kenan of later years, you know, was a bit different the and evolved. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, and be, he became very outspoken. And as a child, he was not like So that, that, that is not you know, him. I, I think he did definitely also, having said that, I think, you know, in terms of the obvious things, he, he took after me. Um, he, there are a lot of things of his mother's personality that he also, you know, um, I guess inherited or adopted. Um, he was a very sensitive soul, um, much more sensitive than me. Um, I think he, he was also wise. He was foolish, like me, but he was also wise, you know. 
And I'd like to, I think he, he, he got that from his mother. Um, he's very respectful um, to people. Um, that didn't stop him from, you know, uh, getting into all kinds of uh, sideshows. And I mean, you, we all know Kenan as a as a grown up, yeah. as a as an established uh, celebrity. Um, but I, I th there are a lot of good things that I think he got from both of us, you know. But I guess uh, personality wise, you know, that's all you. Is me, <laughs> Stefan. Yeah, Stefan is. Um, um, Stephanie's different. Stephen, as a child, was um, what's the right to it? Precocious. Okay. You know, he was um, super smart. Um, he very creative, um, perfectionist. You know, um, I'm not sure where that comes from. <laughs> um, very athletic. Um, Kenan was like me. Uh, we could. There are cert certain things, you know, we were very athletic with. But, for example, when it came to to, to body strength, like being able to do pull-ups. Yeah, no. Stefan got that from his grandfather yeah. on his mother's side. Yeah. So so Stefan was, um, uh, he was my handsome son. You know, Kenan was. <laughs> he was what? <laughs> <laughs> um Stephen, yeah, so the very different personalities, less outgoing, more introverted, um, but a very caring um, uh, person as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I can imagine you being the disciplinarian that you are, having been raised by another disciplinarian, you starting to see this child, he's, you know, he's acting out, he's rapping, he's doing all these things. Did you, were you impressed? Did you like it? Or did you try to suppress it at any given stage? Especially in the beginning you know, phases. I grew up, um, you know, being exposed to many things, um, you know, from sport to seeing uh, family members owning their own businesses, um, to music, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, when it, when it, when it came to the music side, um, my uncles, my mother and father, um, you know, music was just in our blood and we just, no, I mean, I cannot play any instrument, I'm, you know, I can't claim, but it's just music. And we listened. I remember growing up with my parents on a, on a Friday night, we could literally, literally sit on the floor and listen to music. That was our entertainment on a Friday night. We would, my mother had favorite artists and my uncles had favorite artists and we would, we would know the songs backward. We would yeah. know the lyrics. We would, and, you know, and, and that's how I grew up. And, you know, when, when Kenan and Stefan, you know, came along, uh, I did the same. I played music. We sang along, you know, to all kinds of artists, a lot of old school music. And, uh, you know, for me, it, 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 performing, and singing, and uh, if I could, if I could choose my well, I guess if I could live my life again, I may very well be an artist. You know, so in a way, when playing the music for them, it wasn't with a plan that you know Kenan is going to become an, this this artist, but you know, exposing them to music was just a natural thing, and. Um, so when he when he showed signs of you know that he's a performer, that you know this is the 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 path that he's chosen for me it was um, I was not only supportive and excited about that it's almost he's leading a life that I um, maybe secretly at some stage you admire yeah, yeah that I could could lead you know yeah. I was either going to be a famous a uh, cricketer or a famous soccer player or a famous musician, um, 
you know, so he just happened to be going. And so for me, it was just, and um, as much as, you know, um, for me, and like you, you, I was a disciplinarian, um, at the point when he, when he showed the, you know, the, the signs that this is what he wanted to do, he did so showing the work ethic which um, we, you know, we, we raised them with. You know, for he, he, he had this, this black hardcover book mm. where he'd be writing his rhymes. When he goes to the toilet, he'd be, you know, um, mm. rapping off mm. that. Um, and that's, that's a lot of work. Mm. You know, the creative process is a, is a very lonely process and it's hard work. You know, and I recognized that in Kenan. So I, I, I reached a point where I realized that um, my kids don't have to grow up like me and be this, these academics or uh, top achievers, you know, at university or whatever. They can achieve as long as they apply themselves with whatever they've chosen. Mm -hmm. And I made peace with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as soon as I, you know, I, I saw that that Kenan was really, really. He he always used to say when I fought with him about his schoolwork, you know, Dad, I'm not going to need this. I'm going to. I'm going to use this in my know? future. What? This is what I'm going to do. Algebra for what? You know, and he <laughs> and he showed me, and um, so was I impressed. Yeah, he he was the second best musician in the family, but you know, I was impressed. Who was the first? Me, of course. <laughs> 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 uh, and tell me, um, your move to Joburg with Lynn and you took your family, you moved to, to Johannesburg. Do you think that Kenan would have been able to be where he... If he stayed in Cape yeah, Town? Yeah, 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 if he stayed in Cape Town. I see no reason why he would not have been able to do so. Um as a Cape Town artist. But I, but, I, but I think that, okay, let me change that. I think what he achieved in the end um, was because he, he was exposed to a bigger network. He was exposed to, to seeing how the industry operated on a large scale. Um, he was exposed to, um, you know, the periphery. Um, you know, and just the, the sheer size of the of industry um, and the magnitude in Johannesburg. So, um, I think probably would not. It, it's hard to say. Yeah. You, you cannot keep a. You know that saying. You cannot keep a good man down. Definitely. It doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. So I think that. Um, but I, 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 in retrospect, I think that. Moving to to Johannesburg definitely made a huge difference in terms of, you know, the trajectory of you know of his career and where where he finished. Um, compared to Cape Town, it may have reached the same point, but potentially a little bit would have taken longer. Um, yeah, and and I I think Kenan Kenan loved Cape Town, but but Joburg was his home. It became his home. Um, I guess Cape Town was his kind of his spiritual, you know, because that's where his, he, he grew up. His parents came from, or I came from, his grandparents came from. Um, but Joburg was definitely the uh, his town, you know. The Big Smoke is uh, where it happened. Um, the big city of dreams. Why, why did you move back to Cape Town? Well, I'm... I moved, uh, I worked for an international uh, consultancy uh, called Accenture. Um, so that's why I moved from Cape Town to Johannesburg in the first place. Okay. And I worked here, I was a management consultant. Um, I studied computer science and math, so it's kind of my background. And, um, and then I opened my own businesses. I, I had... Um, software development businesses. And then at some point I saw my bum. Uh, I was into mobile software development way before it was um, 
So I had to close the business down and I moved to Cape Town, you know, went back to Cape Town with my tail between my legs and, uh, you know, got a job and yeah, that's why. And you started but, yeah, again. Uh, but watch the space, you know. You're coming. <laughs> I'm coming, <laughs> coming in, coming in hot, <laughs> coming in hot, come booze. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that when the separation or divorce with Lynn happened as well? When um, no, it was some time after that. It was some time after that. So we, when when we moved to 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 Johannesburg, um, Kenan was still in primary school. Mm. Um, I can't remember if Stefan was. I think he was like in what's this grade zero. Not, not. Great RR. Not, not. It's RR. <laughs> um, and that was at, so the first school Kenan went to was at um, Holy Cross in Victory Park. I don't know if you know. The Lemon Squeezer. I'm so a anyway, Pretoria High. We lived in Greenside. Okay. Um, and then after that, he went to, um, he went to, to Greenside. And then he, then at some point, uh, you know, Lynn was a. Uh, I, I, I guess you know I was comfortable living in, in 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 Greenside. You know, just a nice neighborhood. I was working. I had a good job, um, and and uh, but Lynn was always someone that you know. Ins I guess you know, inspired me and and uh, um, gave me confidence to to do things and. Uh, so I started my own business. I mean, I was in business for for a while. Yeah. And, you know, and um, Lynn was the one that one Sunday said, okay, we're moving to Houghton. Like, really? Okay. <laughs> and we moved to Houghton. Um, and, uh, you know, that's how Ken and, and Stefan moved to St. John's. Yeah. Uh, we lived in Houghton for a while. And, we have great memories. I have great memories of uh, green, living in Johannesburg and Greenside, and then in Houghton. Um, yeah, and then there was a point, Kenan, um, you know, with Lynn and I, I think after 20 years of marriage, um, you know, I wasn't the best husband. Let me just put it out there first. Um, you know, we spoke about, earlier we were talking about the love languages. She... Uh, I, I think her primary love language was spending time, quality time. Quality time. You know the five love languages? What are they? So it's it's affirmation. Okay. It's quality time. Yeah. It's physical touch. Yes. It's service. You know, yeah. I do your run your bath water. I do things for you. And the last one was uh, gifts. You know, I buy you things, you know. So the thing about it is that you... We all have our primary love language, and you, you, in in our relationship, I think Lynn valued quality time as sort of. And I, at that time, I wasn't spending the quality time with her. I was going off playing Where cricket. Where were you? No, no not partying. <laughs> okay. Please, you know, I was responsible. <laughs> I was playing cricket. You were just doing your type. I was doing me. Yeah. You know? Um, I thought that I was working hard, I was providing, so that's the service thing, you know. And uh, so, yeah, we I, we kind of grew apart, you know, for quality time, you know, Lynn still likes hiking and spending time in nature. You know, I, I want to sit in front of the TV and I want to... With, with you know, soccer. I want to play sport. And yeah. I want to... Or I sit at my desk and I code. You know, I'm, a, I'm a software developer by... Um, so I think that, that um, you know, we just grew apart. And you know when she stops asking you to go for hikes and she stops asking you to come spend quality sure. time, then you know. Then yeah. So that's what happened. Yeah. You know, after 20 years, um, yeah, it was sad. You know, I, I did feel that. And it, 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 it definitely impacted the, the, the two children mm. um, very much. Um, Kenan was not someone that, um, spoke. He, uh, you know, he he, he just he, he was at a stage where he finished school. He wanted to go on his own, you know, start his life. So you know, he he couldn't wait to get out of the house. So 
his, so that was his escape from what was happening. Um, yeah. Stefan was in matric. So it was a difficult time, you know, and, um, but it definitely, divorce is not easy. Um, and it hurts, you know, definitely hurts the children. Yeah. And, um, yeah. When, when you look back now, you spent 20 years together with Lynn and you've been divorced for how many years now? I remarried. Okay. Um, I think I remarried after, I think it was like four and a half years. Okay. I remarried in 2010. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what's the question? No, I, it's over because you remarried. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have for my sins, I have a, a nine year old daughter. Nice. So, I have a 35 year old, a 30 year old, and a nine year old. And a nine year old. And then an eight year old grandchild. You're a rock star. It's a bit of a spread, you know? Yeah. Not much, but, you know. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, you, you're living your life like it's, it's golden. Um, how was how was the transition like with with the family? You separated, you remarried. Uh, the boys are here with their mom. Kenan is coming up slowly but surely. He's making his mark. What was happening? There were people like, "Hey, Tony, you're lighty, a slander in Joburg." What 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 was that like? That time, as Kenan was coming up. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, at the time that by the time that we separated. Um, divorced. Um, Kenan had actually been, he started at high school, so it wasn't new. Mm. He was an artist. Um, the first album that he made was with two school friends, a label called Creative Kingdom, just up the road here. Um, you know, so we were part of that journey for, and I was, you know, both Lynn and myself and Stefan were part of that journey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, driving him to gigs or driving him to rehearsals, driving him to studio, um, giving my car off so that, you know, uh, I had a convertible at that stage. Nice. You know, to my surprise, I would see my, my car popping up in a video. <laughs> 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 um, or finding, you know, burn marks on the, Ish. on the leather, Ish. you know. So, so I'd been part of that, that journey, um, you know, we all were part of that journey. Mm. Um, I'm digressing a bit. I remember the first time that they were, that they were on radio. It was with YFM in, in Rosebank. Yeah. And so it was a Sunday afternoon. And I remember us driving around Joburg and listening to, they played like 10 tracks of their album. Nice. We were so excited nice. and, you know, like uh, emotional. Like we were hearing our son is on radio and mm. all that. So, you know, we, so it was, um, I guess his breakthrough came, I guess, around the time of, uh, I don't know if you know, what was the first, what was his first job? His first job? Yeah. He had a job. I, I, I just know so that. So he studied sound engineering. Yes. He worked for a year at the SABC. Okay. Doing jingles. Oh, yeah, I don't know if many people know this. We don't. So he made um, for TV3, I think, you know, like there was a TV3. <laughs> TV Taro. <laughs> <laughs> You're too young, you can't remember that. I don't know it. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, that's what, what he did. So by the time, you know, Kenan was not an overnight um, sensation. sensation. He paid his dues. Yeah. He worked. The, the system, he networked. Um, it took a long time. And I, th I, th I guess it's a reflection also the fact that he um, he was very independent. So, you know, he, later on he did work with Sony, he did work with, um, you know, Universal. He also did some stuff independently. He was, he was not signed to a label as such for, for a while. Um. Um, so it took, Took a while. So I guess when he finally made that, you know, that breakthrough, you know, I guess it's victory lap, you know, jealousy that time. Mm. It wasn't a, it wasn't really a surprise. You guys have been grinding. Yeah. You were like, it's your yeah. time now. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
you know, so when he when he came up, it was um, when he really came up. Um, it wasn't a surprise because yeah. he'd been doing it for a while. Yeah, I guess the thing that you know, it, it, the, what people didn't know, he started very early. Yes. you know, from you know from high school. Yeah. So, um, it, it, but of course, we were proud, um, and we. But in some ways, you know, I, I guess we also took things for granted that success will come. You know, Kenan was. Um, a, a, primary school on a Sunday at my mother's house you would be you know she had this two story house he would come down the stairs and he would land and he would do Michael Jackson you know bad or um, you know whatever song was with his with his Reeboks with orange laces you know he was a performer yeah. from a young age and it was just uh, uh, we loved doing karaoke you know, at, it, I don't know if you were born yet at the time of the first Idols. I hope no, I'm not I insulting wasn't. you. No. Um, <laughs> we, we actually built a stage on top of the jacuzzi in the house in Alton. Okay. And we had like a proper karaoke, uh, Idols evening. We dressed up. And um, and I remember Kenan performing, like getting on the stage and performing. And I thought, my God, you know, like, this kid, he, he's it's like there. a proper artist. It's there, yeah. You know? Um, you know, so so in a way, you know, I guess it was just we always expected um, that you know he would be successful. Yeah, it's one thing to see your little child performing there, and you think, oh, my son is a star. It's another for them to be popular in Joburg and then in Cape Town. And then in South Africa, but an international, global, international mega motion. star. Yeah. Were you ready for that? I always thought that Kenan, I mean, I, I was not only his father, I was also a fan. Okay. Um, to this day. Yeah. I listened to his music and there was a part of me, and I guess that was, maybe it was for me, <laughs> I felt that, you know, there was a, the 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 world was a stage which he could enter yeah. and should have entered. Um, he was that good in my eyes, and of course I'm biased. Um, he uh, he was different for me. He was, um, you know, in the hip hop um, scene. You know, there's a there's a lot of you know. Um, it's not only about the music. You know, there's a lot of beef. There's a lot of rivalry. It's the nature of the beast. Yeah. I think the one thing with Kenan is that he he also got involved in his in his his side shows. But I I, I like to think that he still focused on the music. Mm. You know, and um, what I take pride in is um, a lot of the music that I told you in the beginning of the interview that. I listened to. You were playing. I played for him. Yes. And um, years later, he, I remember driving in Joburg still. He was somewhere going um, in to, towards Bloemfontein. They were touring. And he, he phoned me. And uh, he said, Dad, sing me a song. He said, sing me one of my songs. So I was like, running out of things I can prove myself. Way too busy winning, I'm going to lose myself. Every day they go head on us, hey, and his friends were clapping. Like, look, look at the old man can do it. Huh? So then he said to me, and then he got serious. He said, You know what, Dad? If you didn't play me the old school music, I wouldn't have learned to tell a story in my music, you know? And, uh, you know, A, I was very proud, you know, because I had that influence on him. But B, you know, it, it just emphasized and underscored for me or reminded me of how much he was about the music and, and evolving as an artist. Um, and, you know, if you, if you look at, um, his last album, the, the two tracks that come directly, that he sampled, that come directly off an old album that, you know, an old group called Bread that I played for him. 
Um, but he, he, he put his own, you know, um, his own spin, spin on it and all that. It. Yeah. You know, given all of that, it's a long answer to your question. Mm. Given all of that, um, I think he was world class. I think that there's a bigger stage that he, um, I think he was successful in, in, on the, on the African continent. Um, I think there was a bigger stage that, you know, he would have been, he would have been good there too. He was world class. Um, so I guess, you know, it's, it's, uh, in some ways, you know, he got some of that recognition after he passed, yeah. you know, um, time being on Times Square, yeah. the BET award, um, you know, so I'm very, I, I look back with a lot of pride and, you know, and gratitude for what I'm grateful that I had this amazing son, uh, amazing musician. Music was always so much of an important part of me. It still is. And, uh, uh, he was he was uh, multi talented, you know. Multi talented. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm asking your question. <laughs> you but. you sure did. Let's let's be biased a bit. I need a top five from you of AKA, AKA songs. songs. Ah, yeah, that's an unfair question. Oh, well, let's make it top three then. Top three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, you know what? I'll tell you the story. I was on Five FM. And they play, they have this little game where they, they play the tracks like really fast and you have to you guess. You have to, yeah. But being the competitive person that I am, because you I knew were they like... were going to do it before the, before I went on, I wrote down like, okay, uh, victory lap, congratulate, all eyes on me and composure, um, um, Kaifa song. Uh, and, 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 and I got like to number 20. Yeah. Of, um, of songs that, you know, like I realized that he had so many hits. He did. And I cannot, I cannot, I'm being truthful to you. I cannot tell you those are my top three, those are my top five. I just love all of them. I love all of them. I love, um, if you ask me, was Mass Country better than. Um, touch my blood was mm-hmm. it better than levels. Let's talk about the album. You don't need then. to choose one. You don't need to choose top three. You know, it's a good conversation piece. Yeah, but I can sit there and I can listen to an album. You know, back to front or front to back, and um, and I there's some music that I, I mean, even Bovomania. I love some of the tracks on there. Mm. Um, so I don't really. I'm going to disappoint you. <laughs> or are you going to insist on You're going to give me a PR answer. I, I would actually love to know. So. Not that others are least favorite, but just okay, I'll tell you your what, top. Your I'll tell top you what. If I, if I go album by album. Okay. You want that? Let's do albums then. So levels. Number one. Now congratulate me. Now congratulate me. All I want to do was my, make my old man proud. You know? Yeah. Because I featured that song. <laughs> <laughs> Flexing. Um, Very selfish reasons, but yeah. go on. Yes. Um, on levels. I liked, I mean, what's the other stuff on levels? Uh, some dope. Yeah. I like uh, the one with Jay something called Sunshine. Okay. Um, and then uh, on Levels was also um, with Les. What's it called? With Les, I'm going to tell yeah. you now. All Eyes on Me. No. Which one? All Eyes on Me. Was that on? Yeah. Was that on Le- oh, on All Eyes on Me. Yes, it's All okay. Eyes on Me. That's my top four. On Povomania. Um, was it energy? Yeah. Energy was my number one. Number two, was it heavy drank? Sure. Okay. Um, and there was another one. Was it called monument? Ah, don't ask me. You must right. tell me. Then on <laughs> um, alter ego, I guess it was victory lap. Yo, alter ego was the one. Victory lap and jealousy. Yo, that was yeah. the one. On. Um, on um, 
the tough one I think is Touch My Blood was obviously it was Kaifers. Yes. It was Jigger and yes. Fella. But I you know, I think the there's some great music on Yeah, no, his body of on work Touch is My too Blood, much. which I, I thought he never got recognition yes. for. Yes. Um on what did he make after Touch My Blood? It was it was, kind of, it was uh, Mass Country. It was Bova Mania then Mass Bova Country. Mania, then Mass Country. Yes. On Mass Country, I guess my favorite songs would be I'm coming with the heat. Don't cool me down. I in my teeth. I'm in my cup. With uh, Empty. Okay. Um I, I told you once and I told you before that love's supposed to be something more than a pastime. Last time. Last time was the first first track on his last album. And that song came from that group called Bread that I played him when he was a light chick. He sampled it from there. So that's a special song. Um, what's the other thing? You don't guess, like lemons and, and lemonade. I guess I lemons, <laughs> company. Yeah, this is this is so many. There's a lot. So no? many. We will sit here the whole. I guess night. I, I hope I answered your question. You did. In you a did. roundabout way. You 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 sure did. Let's talk about um, your introduction to DJ Zintle. And what kind of a relationship you have with Zintle? Um. The first time I met her was, was um, I think the first time that Kenan told me that Kyra was on the way was in 2014. Okay. Um, Sarah had just been born. I was in Joburg for Christmas. And then he, he came to lunch with, with me um, at my, my wife's family. And um, then... On the way to the car, he told me, oh, it's uh, St. Louis pregnant. Um, by so, the way. Just by the way. <laughs> and I was super excited because I was going to be a grandfather. Cairo is your first grandchild. Yeah. I'm okay. my only one. Okay. I think. Stefan doesn't have kids. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I saw so I met St. Louis around there. All right. Um, and then... Yeah, I mean, I, I was there when Cairo was born. Did you go pay damages for Cairo? Oh, yeah, we went we went to pay damages. <laughs> that was an amazing trip to KZN. We nice. went to Danauza. Nice. I don't know if you've been to Danauza outside of Newcastle. Mm -hmm. uh, we left 5 o'clock in the morning. Kenan just came back from the club. He Yo. had a shiner. He had got in a fight. He was drunk. Slept in the back of the of the taxi. Me, I don't like. I don't want to die in a quantum, you know. <laughs> so I was nervous as hell about this. Do um, uh, you know that line for? I don't. I don't want to die in a quantum. So uh, I was nervous. This driver. I was yeah. questioning the driver. My man, have you done these long trips? You know, how many have you done? Are yeah. you a safe driver? Yeah. So we took the road that morning. We first struggled to get out of Joba because the guy didn't know and then we were on the way it was misty I was nervous as hell <laughs> and then the we went through Newcastle to get to Newcastle you drive through territory with potholes and the tires and were cut and the trucks and we had everything to stop. then we had to go get the cow oh gosh so Kenan didn't have enough cash so we all had to go to the ATMs and draw cash we went to the mall the cow standing there eventually we're on our way the cow the cow that cow knew what was coming <laughs> so we went to St. Louis house mother's house did the negotiations you know and saw the the cow being slaughtered and you know like it was it was kind of an amazing day um so you know and I know presently through that um, I also know her um, during the period, well, well know her, of course I know her, knew her. I spent time, I tried to spend time also during that difficult period, um, you know, after the the separation, um, you know, especially after Cairo was born. I would go to, she was staying in, um, in Bryanston, I think it was Bryanston. You know, I would go there. When I was in, in Joburg, I would go there and visit 
spend time with Cairo and uh um yeah. And um so I think we we we've never spent a, a lot of time together but you know when she used to come to Cape Town and I would try to see her around that period um I tried to see her last week when she was at the Sevens yeah. but then I missed her so uh, for me she's she's family yeah know? um she's the mother of my my grandchild so you know I love her uh, as you know as a child as family um she has her own family now and um you know I'm grateful that Cairo's got you know Bungani um and she's part of a you know of a family also um yeah so you know Zantle is always in my heart will always be in my heart yeah. um and she she had a a certain influence on Kenan um and I know that he he loved her um you know and when you have a child with someone you'll always love that person uh, you know not necessarily in the same way but um and he respected her uh-huh. so for me she's she's as much family as you know Stefan and um and Cairo is yeah as as a grandfather you just had your granddaughter who is a couple of months old and your son is alleged to be in an affair with another celebrity. What was the conversation between you and Kenan at that time? I, I guess, you know, firstly, I was, I remember when the, when the story broke, I, I was at the gym, you know, and I remember just, I burst out crying just um, because this had happened. And, um, and at that time, I guess it's, it's, you know, like it's that traditional me that I spoke to in the beginning. Um, and, but I, I, I was also disappointed at that time because he didn't come out and admit it. And I remember texting him saying, Kenan, don't make the mother of your child out to be a liar. Come out and say it. Admit it. Just do that. That was kind of the conversation. And of course, he didn't come out immediately. You know, it was like a lot of nonsense and noise. And <laughs> um, But eventually he did, you know, and he yeah. admitted that. Um, but that was the conversation. Um, I, over time, I've learned that I cannot judge him. Um, I, I'm a, um, I'm a, a flawed individual myself, yes. you know, and, uh, so it's not for me to judge him. I was disappointed at that time. Um, and I did say to him what, you know, I thought he needed to do, mm. um, which he eventually did, but that was the conversation, yeah. um, you know, do the right thing, you know? Um, just at least don't, don't let this situation carry on where she's saying this happened and you deny it or you keep quiet, Mm -hmm. you know, she's the mother of your child. Um, I'd like to think that he did right by, uh, by admitting it, it. even though it took longer. Yeah. And now how did you take then to the relationship with him and Bonang then afterwards? Because then I've, he luckily I've I've I cannot I was never funny with you know, in terms of my toward uh, or antagonistic toward uh, Bonang and 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 she never treated me badly and she never did anything said anything nasty to me um whenever i went to the place where they stayed she tried to make me feel welcome uh. um and i embraced her and accepted her as kenan's partner uh. um as i did with nadia um as i did with his other girlfriends um you know it's it's not for me to that's his that was his choice um and 
none of them were you know behaved badly towards towards me um whether it was Zintle, Nadia, Anele, Pulang, I'd like to think that I had a, uh, it was, it was decent. So you, you treat people how they treat you, basically? Yes. You, they give good yes. energy, you give good energy. But also I think what was, what was specific in this instance was that it's not for me to to choose for my children who their partners are. Yeah. That was his choice. And uh, he chose Bunang and I had to accept that. As much as I was disappointed at how things unfolded, yeah. um, I never let that cloud me in terms of how I behaved towards Bunang. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was a short period of time. I mean, I, I can't remember how long they were together. Um, and she was always nice to me. Yeah. Are you cool with her to this day? Like if you see her in the I have no public space, media gatherings. I have no it's um, chilled. I hold no um what's the word? Animosity. There's no animosity towards yeah. any of them. Yeah. Um I I even uh, I'm 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 not following but I'm on Instagram I'm Friends with um, uh, Mbali. Mm-hmm. Mbali was his first girlfriend. Okay. Do you know Mbali? Black coffee sex work. Hey! Hey! I didn't know. That was his first God. girlfriend. Oh, okay. so Mbali's going to be my daughter in law. <laughs> I love Mbali. Yeah. I still love Mbali. Talented, beautiful, um, as as I love Nadia. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's my nature. I accept and embrace. Why, why do you think Kiernan never went for a colored girl? I don't know. He tried with Nadia, but not quite, but he's never actually... Is Nadia been. colored or not? I, that's what I'm saying, he tried, <laughs> but not quite. Nadia, I'm sorry, I didn't bring this up. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that is, though? Just get a colored girl I, and I settle no, down. Uh, from a young age, he, he had this girlfriend, um, young puppy love. Um, a black girl. In Houghton, just like two doors, ago, uh, yeah. two doors away, a couple of days. On the opposite side of the road. Um, what was the name? Neo. And I remember Gineo. this. Neo. Huh? Antonio. Neo. Neo. And I remember Kenan ran up an 8,000 rand telecom bill. Calling the girl. Calling Neo across yeah. the streets. Across the street. Yeah. I told him, you are going to work at ShopRite, <laughs> but you are going to pay that thing off. <laughs> So I think from, and then he had uh, a girl at at school, Tenslantla. Yeah. And then I th- I'm just used to Ken and always having... Uh, a black girlfriend. Black girlfriends. Got it. Yeah. Got it. It's Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, your child, I don't know, did he get it from you? He He came across as like a gentleman, you know. And when he was with a woman, he really was with the woman you know and he like treated her like the queen of his castle you know did he get that from you or of course <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think Kenan Kenan was um, he, he wore his heart on his sleeve yeah um, and I remember Kenan saying to me you know you, you need to be with a woman that inspires you, pushes you, challenges you. Um, and I think all the women in his life, you know, from Zintli to Bunang, Mbali, Nadia, um, you know, they, they all challenged him, they all inspired him to be better than he was at that moment, to evolve, um, you know, so, so I think that was that was Kenan. Kenan put his heart on someone, and you know, 
focused. Yeah. You know, and he made a big deal. He was a romantic, you know. Um, so, yeah. Of course, it came from me. Well, le. but we saw we saw a different side of him though when when Anela Demba came came into the picture. Yeah. Um, particularly with with the videos that came out and and the pictures of Kenan that came out. Why, why do you think that happened? Which videos are you referring to? Like the one there's where he breaks down the door? There's a video where Anele is crying and there's two guys trying to console her, trying to get her to calm down. And she's saying, you guys don't know what he's doing to me. You don't know what he's putting me through. There's a video of that. And there are pictures of a door that has a hole and AKA is seen coming through the hole and like his shirt is torn it's just very unsettling pictures and videos. And that was a side that I don't think any of us expected to see from, from him. W Personally, yeah. in my view, yeah. um, Kenan and Anele, um, you know, they were different stages of their lives. Yeah. And this is my personal view and I don't speak for anybody else. I'm not sure that they were good for each other. As a, as a father's view. Um, Kenan, by nature, was an excitable person. And, you know, him and I used to have fights, not physical fights, but, you know, we could fight and then it's over. Um, you know, and he was, he was vocal and, um, and, and over time, there was an aggressive side to Kenan, um, very vocal. And but you know, he, he also had this heart of gold that you know, um, he he could he could go through something, an episode, and realize, you know, I made a mistake, or you know, as for as for what happened, you know. Uh, you know, in terms of what what's portrayed through those videos and those those clips, um, I, I don't really want to go into the detail of that as to what happened behind, because there's a the inquest into Anelli's death is is happening in next year, and you know I don't want to preempt uh, and you know. When we are asked the questions, then we will explain and we will. All I can say is that um, there's a context. So if you look at that video where he breaks down the door, it doesn't show what happens after that. Yeah, or before. It doesn't show what happened before. Sure. So you don't know why is he breaking down the door. You know, so, and I think that what's been put out into the public domain has been very one-sided. And up until Kenan's passing, um, he refused to speak out and bring out his side to the point of pointing out um issues in Anele. He said, I will respect your your memory. And so I think largely there's a there's a one sided view, view of things. And with time it will um and we that story will be the other side of the story will be told. Mm -hmm. Um and as soon as and, and naturally it has to be told as part of the inquest into Anelli's death. Mm. Um, those inc those were the uh, those those look like the only incidents, but there were other incidents. Um, Kenan, there are pictures of Kenan, you know, with with bruising under his eye, for example. Did that make its uh, its way into the into the no. the Sunday World or to publications? No. 
We did not do that. Mm. And Kenan would not allow us, nor did he do it himself at that time, because he respected Anelia after she passed. Mm. So, was Ken, did Kenan have faults? Of course he did have faults. Um, but, I, but I do think it's a, and it's an unfair um, for me in a situation in that the public is only, in that, in that respect, the public has only seen or heard one side of the story. Yeah. You know, so, and I remember going through where there were calls from, you know, from NGOs, one particular NGO for him to be cancelled, you know. And f for once, for once, in, in all the time, I responded. And my view was just as a, as a responsible public organization, do you not want to hear both sides of the story? Do you not want to have all the facts mm -hmm. before you call for someone to be canceled? Sure. And, uh, you know, and, and I hope that day is going to come, you know? Yeah. We, we look forward to that day, um, Tony. You know, uh, given the, like, the turbulence, you know, and just the toxic nature of that, that relationship, including the 11 years of their, their age um, difference, and you just stated that you don't think that the relationship should have happened. Why then did you go and represent him in going to ask for her hand in, in marriage? It's my, it was my son's choice. Mm. He's, he wanted it as much as um, her parents consented to it. Yeah. You know, it, it was not for us to dictate and say, you cannot do it. Kenan was a grown man. Um, I think like most relationships, there were challenges. Um, well, most relationships have challenges. So who am I as a parent to dictate to my, what was he at the time, 32, 31, to say you, no, I forbid it. You cannot marry Anele. And I think the same applied to, to Moses. Um, he did not forbid it. Um, it, it it's, it's choice. And, you know, it, it is not a, we don't, we, we were not living in an era where as parents you could dictate to your children what they do and what they cannot do. Yeah. Um, it, it didn't mean that we were not supportive of whatever they needed to do to address whatever um, difficulties they were. Um, so, I mean, that's my answer. It's, yeah. it's, it was Kenneth's choice. Yeah. It's not my choice. It was never my choice to make. You were just going to support But I needed son. to be there to support you. Yeah, yeah. How were you? How were you received on on that day at at the Dembe household, and and how has your relationship been with them since that day of the Lobola negotiations, up until the passing of we both were, of them? We were received warmly okay. by the family. Um, we were treated well. We were made to feel welcome. Um, her sisters. Um, prepared this amazing meal and served us. Um, for me, it was a beautiful day. Um, for me, as someone who grew up in, in, a, in, in a colored community, being exposed or, or getting further exposure to um, you know, the African traditions, yeah. the Zulu culture, um, it was a beautiful day for me. And it was. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I, I enjoyed the day. Um, I mean, we didn't know what was going to happen. Two, I think it was two weeks later. So we were... Um, when Anele passed, um, uh, we were... I was on the scene within an hour. Um, we supported Kenan around the time. 
um, also supported the family. Every day of that week, um, the Tembes had a, um, a service at the house because people would come to the house. The first day, I remember speaking as the head of the Forbes family. Um, we then traveled to, to, Cape, uh, to Durban from Cape Town um, with Kenan and Anneli's body. Um, we were there. We attended the funeral. We attended the events leading up to the funeral. Um, and at that time, there was, there was no us and them. We were... You were a family. We were there. Yeah. You know, we, were treated, we were treated well. Yeah. What, what has happened since? Um, after the funeral, I kept in touch with Moses. Okay. Um, occasionally, I would send him a message to say that as a father, you know, I was thinking of them. And that was genuine. Yeah. Um, because I could picture myself in, I couldn't really picture, but I, 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 I instinctively felt him. it was, yeah. must have been very difficult yeah. for them. Of course, now I know You're what they were going it through. Now. Yeah. Um, so him and I kept in touch. Then, uh, then the whole, I think things started to change a bit when, you know, all these um, reports were coming out in the media, the, the door breaking and all of this, um, you know, I, I think that was the start of, you know, we, we were not in touch anymore after that, um, rightly or wrongly. Um, when Kenan passed, on the morning after he passed, Moses sent me a message, um, you know, sympathizing, and I accepted that. He asked me if they could come to the house to sympathize in Joburg. And um, I said I would let him know because I needed to consult with the rest of the family. Um, because now, remember, leading up to to that in, in between Anele passing and Kenan passing was sure. all the things in the media 100% and uh, the the family felt uncomfortable and I could not say to Moses yes please come you know it, it's a collective it's not me sure. as an individual but before, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I even went back on that weekend, that same weekend by the Sunday, Moses had put out statements in the media. Um, he put my text to him verbatim. I was in the Sunday Times. And I felt, you know, those are, that was private communication. Um, there were statements along the lines of, yes, we, we, we said that he passed, but at the same time there were statements about, you know, now we are not going to see our day in court. And I felt at that time the statements and the timing of the statements were inappropriate. Mm -hmm. It was taking right when we were going through the most difficult time of our lives, um, and since then, we have not spoken. Yeah. On on <coughs> on, the, on the morning of of Anela's passing, uh, you were the first, if not one of the first people that Kianan called. Um. What what was he like when you arrived in? What was Kenan like? Yeah. Uh, Kenan was devastated. He was in shock. He was emotional. Um, was he crying? Like He was going through periods of crying and you know, breaking down. I do remember with me being there, um, at some point, Kenan, you know, he said, Dad, let's, let's sing some of those old songs that we... And we were singing, and, and I sang with him because it was a way to, to, 
to deal with the pain at that moment. Um, you know, and yeah, but he was he was sad, he was devastated. And for a long time after that, Kenan was that way. He could not sleep. He had nightmares of seeing Anele. Um, but that's how he was. He was yeah. devastated. Did he ever at any point tell you that, yo, dad, this is this is a mess because they are not going to believe that she jumped. They're going to obviously um, accuse me and, and, and say I pushed her. Did he ever have that concern? Did he ever state that to you? I think, Kieran, um, I mean, firstly, for us as his parents, um, we've never doubted Kenan. We've never doubted that, you know, did he, you know, did he push her? Did he not push her? Kenan was not a murderer. He was not a murderer. He had his faults, but he was not a murderer. Two weeks before Anele passed, Kenan, and not only Kenan, we went with Kenan. Um, for La Bola, we met with the family and he committed that he wanted her as his wife. So, why would he murder two weeks later? We never had any doubts about that. Um, logically, and also because we knew our son. Was he concerned? Of course he was concerned, um, which is why he went on, uh, he made a statement, he made a video. Um, and he explained what happened. I was, I was not the first on the scene, I was there within an hour. Yeah. Um, to support him, but I was also there when he made the first statement to the police that were on the scene. Um, and his story was um, consistent with the statements he made after that and consistent with our view <laughs> and our belief that our son was not a murderer. So, was he concerned? Of course, I think in those circumstances he was concerned. And, and the inference of these stories that came out subsequently as Kenan being abusive, the inference was that, that he killed her. Yeah. Of course, it was, that was the inference. Um, the NPA looked at all the evidence and decided not to prosecute. There was no grounds to prosecute. I have read the docket, and I understand why the MPA made the decision not to prosecute. Yeah. So, but I think in the circumstances, it was normal for him to have been concerned. You know, it's an unprecedented situation. Um, yeah, and I mean, I'm sure the police also did their own investigation at the scene, you know, and had they thought that he had something to do with it, I don't think that he would have came back to Joburg with you, you know. Um, given the circumstances of her death, you know, I'm sure Kinan would have had some sort of physical um, evidence or, you know, and, 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 and it was not found. But why, why do you think that Tembe's still feel that um, Anele was not suicidal, Anele would not end her life and... Yeah, I, I would not like, to, at this point, given the fact that there's an inquest, I would not like to comment on on the Tembe's and what they think or what they believe. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's not for me to speculate. Um, I think it's you know, when the inquest happens, um, and, I, and I hope you understand. I respect that. You know, I cannot speak and I cannot express publicly an opinion, which is just my opinion. I, 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 it's not for me to do that. I, I, I get that, Tony. Is it true that AKA had warnings not to go to Durban? Sorry? Is it true 
that, that was AKA warned. was warned not to go to I've Durban. heard a number of people uh, say that, you know, in talking to people, you know, more than one person that, you know, they warned him, don't go to Durban. He has never said, Dad, um, they, they, I, I've, I've been threatened, I've received this, this happened. You have not heard that from him. No. But I've heard subsequently from a number of people that, you know, they told him, don't go to Durban. Yeah. The 11th of February, uh, 2023, um, I remember that day, I was actually going to meet Nadia for the first time that day. You were going to I meet was going to meet Nadia for the first time that day. Um, she was performing at Ayanda MVP's party in Santon. And Ayanda had invited me. But I was shooting the podcast that day. And I had plans with my boyfriend. But I ended up not being able to honor those plans. And we sort of had an argument. So I wasn't feeling so good. I didn't feel like going out. So then I just took off my eyelashes and I stayed home. And Nadia was 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 there. How 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 was that day like for you? Do you remember that day? The eleventh. Yes. Before oh, you yeah. received the call, how was the day like for you? What did you do that day? Where so, were you? So I mean, you you almost have to take it back. What, what happened on the? Yeah, I suppose it was on the eleventh. So the eleventh started very early for me. I didn't hear till after twelve. Okay. Because I took it, I, Sarah asked me to sleep with her, lay with her, you know, my young daughter. So I laid down with her and then I fell asleep. And then uh, we heard someone calling my name from the gate. Um, and I went out. It was, it was my, my, my godchild who was, um, Lynn's sister's daughter and she called my name and I went out and obviously I knew something was wrong and um, she said my dad wants to tell you something my dad was on the phone and her dad was in, in, in Johannesburg so Trevor spoke to me and I don't think there's any easy way to deliver the news that he had to deliver. He just said to me, I have bad news. Ken has been shot in Durban. Okay. And then there's, of course, there's this moment where you know, I want, wanted to ask, is he okay? Is he... And Trevor just said it was fatal. And I remember just sort of collapsing on the, at the steps uh, to the gate where I was standing. And um, and I guess you know it was you know it was just disbelief, but it wasn't long. Then I guess survival instinct um, kicked in in terms of disassociating from the emotions and focusing on what needed to be done. And I remember talking to Stefan, Stefan saying, Dad, we're going to have to go to Durban, we're going to have to identify him and go through all of that. I've never, ever gone to identify anybody in a mortuary. And that was the first time. So, so that was the start of my 11th. I had to get ready. I took a shower. It was a wind still evening and the window of the bathroom was open. And at some point, I, I felt this, this gush of air, but, but it felt more like energy. And it felt for me like Kenan saying, Dad, I'm on the other side, and, but I'm with you. And uh, that morning, 6 o'clock, I was on the flight. The flight was a very lonely flight. Yeah. Two hours of, uh, of sitting there. Yeah, you know, I was crying. I was going through all the emotions, and yeah. um, at that time, I don't think anybody knew, um, yeah, or knew who I was. Um, I got to Durban, 
And I was, I was very nervous, met Stefan, Nadia, the team. And then they went off, but Stefan and I went, and we went to the mortuary. And I was very apprehensive about what was I going to see. Yeah. Um, you know. And then uh, we got there, and, um, you know, but, you know, at this point, it was just, we needed to do this, and we did it, you know. We went there, filled out the papers, and then we went in to see him. And it was, it was still, I was still in disbelief. But once I saw him the first time, I was um, less apprehensive. I saw him after the post mortem. I was, and I, I, and I think, for me that was that day was, um, you know. I needed to go through that as part of. It was the starting point of my having to come to terms with it. You know, I needed to go through that. Um, we went in between seeing him the first time and the second time. We went to wish. Um, there was chaos around Wish. We spent most of the day at Wish. Um, you know, but, you know, going, you know, it was, it was a roller coaster. Um, you know, we would be calm and, and, and composed. And then suddenly something would trigger me and, uh, you know, I would, you know, become very emotional. And, you know, that was the, that was pretty much the day. And then um, that night, we, before we flew out, the, the undertakers, the, the, the wife of the company, the, the undertakers, him and his wife flew to Durban just to meet us and tell us that they will take care of everything. You know, and they were there to ensure that Kenan was taken care of and his body was safely... You know, and I think, you know, amidst all that, that pain and, and, you know, that trauma, um, we also experienced um, a huge amount of support and love. Um, you know, even from that day, we, we you know, I... I embrace the investigation team and you know to this day I speak to the investigating officer still mm -hmm. I spoke to him yesterday mm -hmm. um, you know so so and then we flew back and then I, instead of me returning to Cape Town I flew to Joburg and that's where we went to the house and uh, and sort of another emotional coming to his place his mom Nadia, you know, and everyone was there. So it was a difficult day, very emotional day. And, but that was just the start. Um, you asked me what was 11 Feb like. Yeah. That, was, that was what it was like. Have you, would you say that because of the magnitude of his star and just this case, would you say that you've had time to mourn? At all? I think initially, um, at that time, we were very busy, occupied. And just like what I was telling you, it was probably 10 minutes after I received the news when I shifted my focus to what we needed to do and what we needed to do for, you know, not just that day, but leading up to the funeral, after the funeral. We were occupied and busy. I think it, it if anything, it, it may sound, um, you know, funny, but I'm still going through the most difficult time now. Um, I, there are days when, you know, I, I won't say I have good days, I have bad days and I have better days. You know, something can trigger me. And the sense of helplessness that he's gone and that we will never see him again. I'll never feel that bear hug or that, um, 
a little chuckle, you know, that he had, a little giggle. And just, you know, experiencing Kinnan, um, you know, it still hits me. It feels like my heart breaks, you know, every other day. Mm. Um, it's like it just comes back. And, and there are days when I still cannot believe that he's gone. Um, I guess it's, it's, we also have to be grateful that, you know, unlike most people, we can still see Kenan. His music plays, yeah. his videos are there, we hear his voice. We have people reaching out to us on social media and all walks of life, you know, walking around, you know, people will recognize me uh, and learn and they'll come up to us and, and tell us what Kenan meant to them and the impact he had in their lives. And, you know, it helps us to deal with the pain. Um, but the pain is very much there, and the pain is um, is not going to go away for a very long time. And I don't think the pain will ever go away. It will always be there. Um, I think th the thing is to, is over time, what what I'm experiencing is how 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 the pain is is not entirely replaced but in some way offset by by the inspiration by um using his name and his platform mm -hmm. to to do good so you know doing projects where you give opportunities um to emerging artists but using his platform so you know and the more we get and the more I get involved in that, the more I feel energized, the more I feel inspired, which helps me, which offsets the days of sadness. But the days of sadness are still there. And in some ways it's, um, it's more difficult because it's at a point where I guess people, you know, and I've come across people where it's almost there's an expectation that, you know, life must move on now. But, but for me as a parent, I, 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 I cannot understand the concept of life must move on. Yes. You know, it's, it's my life. It's this black hole that's with me all the time. Um, and some days it paralyzes me. Um, and a lot of things in my life just do not have the same meaning as it had before. Um, but I know, you know, that I cannot be in this state forever. I have to, you know, I have to get up. And, and slowly, slowly we are, you know. Yeah. Um, Kara is very young and so is Sarah, Keenan's sister. Do they understand the concept of death and what happened to Keenan? Cairo and Sarah? Yes, they're very young and um <sighs> you know I remember when I when when I was three and a half and my father passed away um I went through the whole funeral and you know the whole procession and all of that but I didn't grasp the the eternity of that um and I think even though Cairo is older than I was when I lost my father. I think also she 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 didn't grasp it, like like any seven year old. Um, and I think in some ways it's probably was more traumatic because she had more time with her father and she knew her father longer than I knew my father. Um, you know so. And I think now, even only now, you know, the I think she experiences the loss um, to a greater extent now because you know she's she misses him. She cannot understand what happened, why it happened, um, and for any eight-year-old, that is. If it's difficult for us as adults, how difficult is it for an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old? Yeah. Um, you know, Sarah's one one year older than Cairo. Um, she's also. I lost my mother two years ago, 
a year and a half before Kennan passed. And, uh, and not long after Nelly passed, so it was difficult for him um, also, particularly difficult for, for Kennan. And uh, her, Sarah's grandfather passed away not long before my mother passed away. So, you know, uh, the kids have, have been through death. They've, uh, so Sarah, I think, has a, she's a bit older and she's, she's under, she understands better mm-hmm. because she's been through it with her grandfather, her grandmother, um, and now with Kenan. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember when my mother passed away, Sarah was, she, uh, my mother was there in the bed and she would, she was there for a while, and then later Sarah would go and listen to it to her heart to see if her heart's not beating, you know. And um, and so she's been through, she's experienced death a few mm. times now, and I think she understands. Um, but I think it's I think it's also different when it's your parent. I, I, I think it's different. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How do you, how do you feel about that CCTV footage of of Kenan's um, oh, final scene moment? When it happened? You know, I can't watch that video. It scares the life out of me, and it's wild to me that it's so viral and people are just watching it and dissecting it like they're talking about a cricket match. How do you feel about that video? I feel better having seen it. Is it? Because I I wanted to know, I wanted to know the circumstances. I wanted to see these last moments. Um, I take some little bit of comfort from the fact that he did not suffer. It was, it went very quick. Um, and the other thing I'd take comfort from was just before it happened, he greeted a friend, a friend that had been a friend for a long time, and he had a smile on his face. So he died he happy. happy. Um, you know, and that's why I wanted to see it. Um, it... It, 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 and I also needed to see it from, because if I didn't see it and other people saw it, um, it would, it would have, um, troubled me, you know, so, and I am the person that I want to see, I want to see the detail. I want to see, I want to know. I read the postmortem reports, you know, I, I want to know. It's it's rightly or wrongly, it's just my way of uh, of uh, and I and I think even Lynn when she she says Kenan came to her in a dream and told her to watch the video because she didn't want to watch the video and I think it helped her also in a way as much of course it doesn't help you to see your son being shot on a pavement and dying in a pool of blood. Um, but in, it's something that I, I think we also had to see. You know, I'm just thinking, and correct me if I'm wrong, do you think that AKA went to Durban as a way of him trying to sort of wave the white flag and be like, guys, I am pat- patriotic about my country like that and there's no way that I can be rest- not in a cocky way but in a way to say guys I have not done anything wrong and I want to show you guys that I'm innocent because if he had not st- like stopped going to Durban and only did Limpopo whatever it would have sort of seen like he's running away from something and he went there because he was just trying to wave the white flag and be like I'm cool with you guys. And maybe that was his fatal mistake. Have you ever looked at that point of view? I, I think for me to, 
to say that it was exactly like that, it would be speculation. Um, what I do know is that Kennan was, he never ran away from issues in his life. And what I know about Kennan is that he also wanted to carry on with life. You know, so he became very spiritual. Um, he found God again, um, or found God. And, you know, it was part of his journey. It was life needed to carry on. He, yeah. There was a new album. Yeah. He was optimistic about the future. He was optimistic about his relationship with Nadia. You know, so it was a point in his life, I think, we reached where life has to carry on. Um, did he go there to wave the white flag and um, show that, you know, I didn't do anything? I, I don't know that. Mm. But I, I'd like to think it was more as part of the natural um, the journey in his life. Um, you know, he loved Durban for some reason. Not sure why. I think he loved the, the Zulu culture. Um, we were big, I don't know if, if anyone knows this, but we were big Johnny Clegg and Savuka, oh, Jaluka nice, fans. Nice, nice, nice. Um, you know, so we listened. This is one of the artists we listened to. Um, and uh, what was that song? Bullets for Bafazan. Um, do you know do you know that song? Um, <laughs> Bullets for Bafazan. Um, go you must to come it. back. Go You're to going it. too far. You must go listen to it. But you know, he, I think he loved the Zulu culture. And, yeah, um, he loved. He was a he was a, he was a great South African, you know. I I remember him at that last election. He him phoning and said, "Dad, are you getting up to vote?" I said, ah, "I feel a bit disillusioned about this." And that. Go and vote. Did you, you know? register to vote for next you know, year? And and um, Kenan was a passion. He, he wore his heart in his sleeve. He was mm. passionate. He did. He, he was bold. He did things that he believed in. And for him, going to Durban was, he's going to Durban. Yeah. Um, I think he had also completed the album, you know, so, you know, he, he talks a lot about the the, the soil, the, the poiki course and the, you know, so did he go there for those reasons that I, I can't say. Okay. I'm going to ask you one last question pending this case. Um, Thank you. Do you believe that Keenan was targeted? It was a hit? Or that was a very random act of oh, no, senseless he was, he was, crime? Oh, no, he was assassinated. Yeah, definitely, he was assassinated. Um, I cannot go into the details of what we've been briefed in relation to the case and the progress that's been made in terms of the investigation, um, other than what's on public record. Yeah. Um, if you look at the... It, it took planning. It required resources. Um, so it definitely wasn't... A random case. The guy walks around, targets Kenan and shoots him in the head. How's that random? There's a second shooter that tries to make sure that the job is done. And he hits There's tips. nothing random about that. Yeah. Um, so yes, it was a hit. It was an assassination. Yeah. It was organized. And there's nothing that I'm saying now that's not been said by the, confirmed by 100%. the police. So definitely. So there were, there were people with money behind it that funded it, um, people that had access to resources. Um, 
definitely. Who did it? For me, um, you know, there's significant progress has been made in the investigation, but we have to let that investigation run its course. Yeah. I, I do think it, we are close. Okay. Um, the minister was on Metro last week and he, it's public record what he said. Um, so based on the progress that we that's been communicated to us by the police, the investigating officer and the NPA, um, and not as a one-off on an ongoing basis, we believe it's close. But all of that and the evidence points to that it was an assassinate nation and that it was organized and he was targeted. Yeah. What the motive is, we will only know. That is unclear at this point. When it all comes out. Yeah. And when it comes out, again, I want to be there and I want to be in that courtroom and mm-hmm. I want to... I want to understand why did they do this. Um, you know, I I think it's only fair. Yeah. I think also we have such little faith in, I know, like the, what? The, the arm of the, the law system. is long and it must take its course. But we are reaching a year very soon of Kenan's murder. How are we going to ensure that this doesn't end up as another Senzo Meiwa case or a DJ Somebody case, even worse, that has no arrests, nothing? Senzo Meiwa has been in the courts for years now. Even his dad passed away trying to see justice for his son. Yes, the minister was on radio last week, but how are we going to ensure that your family gets justice and us as his fans, we we see this thing concluded. I mean I, I cannot I cannot guarantee anything, but I know the I know a bit more about the progress that's been made. Okay. And you know, it's significant. They have two people in custody. Okay. Now, I don't think before the minister said that, that that was public record. Yeah. But we've known about it for a while. And so we know about other things, which is not in the public domain yet. And it is not for for me to divulge that and because we do not want to jeopardize the progress in the case. You know, that's why we don't speak about it. Um, but what, you know, from day one, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about corruption in the police, but I can tell you that the investigating officer, the team, they have worked diligently from day one. From that Saturday morning, you know, we met them uh, through the, from at WISH, po- at the post-mortem, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we have, w- we have walked nine months together. And I believe that the investigating team are doing their best and working as fast and working as thoroughly as they can yeah. because this has to be done right. Yes. Imagine going to arresting people, going to court, and the case falls down. Yeah. So I still have confidence in the police. Um, most recently, the investigating officer and the deputy director of public prosecutions traveled from um, Durban to brief Lynn and I in Joburg. And they gave us, um, you know, the details of where it is, you know. So is this very similar to Senzo Maia? 
Will it take eight years, nine years? I hope not. I don't think it will. Um, but there are no guarantees. I think the people that are being, that are the, the known people of interest are just at the bottom or sort of towards the middle of that pyramid. It's an, it's an ongoing investigation that's going to take more time. So even if those people are apprehended, what's above that will take even longer. Um, but it's a good start. And, um, you know, uh, so I don't think it's the same scenario. I really, and I have confidence in, in, in the police and the team. Um, I cannot, I, and, and what we have been really tried hard, Lynn and I in particular, is to, is to plead, um, you know, for, for the authorities to be given time to do their work. 100%. And we've pleaded for people not to, uh, convicts, friends or associates. Yeah. Um, you know, the police have told us that they've they questioned his close friends that were there. Yeah. And there is no evidence that they were involved. And we accept that. Okay. You know, so, you know, and, and we wait for all the final evidence to be presented. Okay. And, and so we, we ask for 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 time and 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 consider this all they had they had video evidence but that video evidence is actually not the conclusive evidence right because it's grainy you yeah, can't positively can't see who's who yeah you it's know? just the they guy had to start wearing, from phone records yeah. they had to they had to start with hundreds of people that were in that area at that time making calls so I, I take my hat off to the investigating team. Um, yeah. So I don't think that it's going to take as much time. And also, I think it is important that we as the family keep asking, what is the progress? Yes. What is the progress? Yes. Explain this to us. Um, you know, and because and, and, I think that is important that that um, even if we forgive what's the people that did this, we have a right to know what happened, you know, and, and as a family. Yeah. Have you, have you been to his gravesite since the burial? A few times. Um, okay. Three times. Okay. Obviously, because I live in, in Cape Town. Yeah. Um, the first time obviously, at the funeral. The second time was after the Metro Awards. Okay. And it was much more emotional for me than, than I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, they say, you know, he's not there anymore. He's somewhere else. Mm. But, you know, when you go there, you know, we put him in that hole. Mm. And he's still there. Mm. And uh, so it was very emotional when we came back from the metros for me. And then recently, Lynn and I just drove one rainy day. It actually started raining. And afterwards, we were talking and thinking, like, it's probably Kenan. And like, he was showing us he was there. And I remember standing alone. Lynn was sitting in the car just with an umbrella or st before that, even standing in the rain, just standing there at the grave and just like, just going through all these emotions and even disbelief that, that it had happened. You know, I mean, I, I'm at the grave, but I'm still disbelieving that, that it happened. Um, and that my beautiful boy is down there and that, you know, it's happened. So, uh, but I would like to go more often, but unfortunately, I don't, you don't stay I can't in go Joburg. that often. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, 
what's your call for us as a country and like you know his beloved fans what's your call you have your own rituals and routines as a family on how you uphold his memory how how would you like us as a country and as a community to keep Kenan's spirit alive I think firstly, the obvious way is play his music. Yeah. Drink his alcohol. <laughs> we don't profit anymore, but you know, drink the cruise. <laughs> um, play his music. Enjoy it. Celebrate it. Um, I, I also think that, you know, Kenan stood for, for so many things, you know, um, when it's election time, go vote. That's why I asked you, are you registered for yes. next year? Yes, and I you didn't well. hear me. You I did like... hear you, but you know. <laughs> I did hear you. I just chose not you to answer. You missed me. Huh? So you missed me. I am. <laughs> so go vote. Um, Support have the, the flag box. Up. Yes. Take pride in the flag. Um, you know, spend time with your daughter or your son. He was a good father. I think he was, in, in, in some ways, he was a better father than me at that stage. Um, help others. Give others opportunities. Honor him in that way, you know? Um, if you're a, an artist that have made music, um, where's that young lady? She made music. She yes, says she's, she's she a says singer. She's got music, she's but she hasn't singer. put it out yet. <laughs> Put your music out. Yeah. Be bold and put it out there. You know. Put your podcast out. Yes. Yeah. You know. Um, take that next step. Be bold. <laughs> I think that. I think that um, is probably the best way for me to, you know, honor Kenan and recognize Kenan, and attest to what he stood for. Um, and if there's, if you know, uh, if that happens, I'll be. You know, I'll be truly grateful and, and because, you know, we, I think we all strive for, for having an impact on the world around us. And after 35 years, I think Kenan definitely had that. And so the best way I think is, is to do that. And, um, along the way, if you have to shed a tear, um, do that, you know, it's, it's I, it, what's amazing for me is how ordinary South Africans, not necessarily only fans, have reached out to us and supported us. Um, you know, it's a it's a, it's a tragedy. Uh, you know, it's not just a a, a hip hop artist that that died, and ordinary South Africans. You know, um, and it, not only that they supported us, but they genuinely. Um, are also in mourning. They heard. You know, and it may sound weird, but in some ways it makes me proud because that is the, the, the magnitude of the effect he had and the impact he had on people. Yeah. You know, um, he was not a perfect person, um, but he had that. People loved him, you know, and they still come up almost every day and they tell me how much they loved him and they still love him. Um, it's a long answer to a short question. Yeah. You never get short answers. You are just like... <laughs> <laughs> I told you, this is Tony Forbes TV and I'm interviewing Hazel. <laughs> Welcome to the Tony Show. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking time out and coming to such a... It's a good thing that I didn't give you the questions before, you see. Did I do okay? You did so well. I think you're right. <laughs> Thank you, Tony no. Forbes. Go back to Cape Town. Go yeah. well, go shell. You, you've inspired me to start my own channel. Yeah. Tony Forbes TV. I'm going to talk about like, everything under the sun, you know, <laughs> my rugby team, my poor soccer team, you know, all of these things. Uh, don't be controversial now. Huh? Don't don't be controversial. Which which poor I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, soccer team? I'm not gonna change. I'm not gonna know, uh, let people know it's me. I'm just gonna have like a an AKA like Breno or something mm -hmm. like it. You know. <laughs> 
Uncle Tony, we're out. Let's go. We've been having this conversation. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. I'm very honored by your presence. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I wish you well. I wish you healing. And may this case really have the best outcome for all of us. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you, um, honoring Kenan in this way also. Um, and talking about his life, his legacy, and his, his achievements. Um, you know, it's really honoring him and honoring us. So thank you. And I also want to say that in, you know, very seriously, I'm, I, I, I really take great pleasure in seeing young people like you. I'm also young, by the way, but <laughs> young, younger people like you really, you know, um, you know, doing so well. And, you know, I, I wish you all the best Thank um, you. with the channel. Thank you. Um, and whatever you know, I can do to support and help, um, you know, I will. Thank so, you. You know, I, I, I hope to have you back on my show. I will, you definitely. Know, I'm going to make TV a whole trip Coming to it. you live well, nah, I'm from gonna Cape Town. I'm going to make a vlog. Come to Cape Town. It's going to be a vibe. And thanks to the team. Halala team. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> We're out, ne? Shab, 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 if a deal.